start first, okay? So, um, my name is Mike. Um, okay, I have... I started this home automation uh, project of mine probably five years ago, okay, doing my own house. So, previously, I was uh, looking for... Uh, I was renovating a house, and I was looking for the, all these kind of smart home products. But five years ago was like, you can't really find anything much, except, except for all those very expensive systems. Okay. So along the way, I, 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 I bought something from, from Europe, I flew there for honeymoon, and then I picked up some devices and fly back to Singapore and try. So I asked my electrician to wire into my lighting, wire it into my curtains, and start trying out. Then I started my own blog. Uh, this is domotic.sg, uh, where I periodically share the kind of weird, funny things that I, I, I do for smart home. Okay. Then, somehow along the way, I began selling smart home products on my own website, which is Automate Asia. So I've been doing this for probably three years. Yeah. So smart home for five years and doing this for business for almost three years. Yeah. So I'm not here to sell anything. Okay. Uh, just quickly skip over and say, okay, like I mentioned, um, some years ago, um, these are all the expensive products. <coughs> Preston is, is a very established brand for, for smart home, uh, same for Control 4 and 7. But even, even as of today, it costs you around at least five digits to do up a simple, simple home automation, like controlling lights, curtain, uh, and audio, audio visual. So that was many years ago. Uh, now they are still around, but for these few years, we've seen a lot of smart home protocol coming up. Uh, be it Zigbee, uh, Wi-Fi, uh, some running on Bluetooth, and some uh, probably you can find on Taobao or, or AliExpress. Uh, you find a lot of smart home products, dirt cheap, uh, running on 433 megahertz. So these are some of the uh, protocols. And the one that I'm using is Z-Wave. Okay? I am, you can call me biased, but I'm totally biased towards Z-Wave. So, why I don't choose, i tell you why I don't choose each of them. So, for Zigbee, although they say it's an open protocol, but every company will implement their own way of using Zigbee, that you buy some product from company A, you cannot use company B. Like you buy a light switch from company A, you buy a smart home hub from company B, it just doesn't work. And even now today, you can't really find a lot of Zigbee product in the market. Yeah. So next, Wi-Fi. We don't want to say too much, it's, it's, it's too congested already. You have already a lot of Wi-Fi devices at home. Why should we put on more? Lah? And then the other thing is Bluetooth. So Bluetooth, you always need a phone to work. work, to work. I haven't seen any, that, any that, that can work without phone right now to, to do a control. Uh, then in terms of product range, it's really some, some way to go. Lah. Then 433, of course, that's cheap. But again, mostly proprietary. You buy from one company, likely not working with another company, and you can't find much sensors uh, working on 433 or so. Yeah, and then it is uh, running on one-way communication. Um, this, this communication part is uh, something that is uh, special in Z-Wave and Zigbee, where say, if you use your phone app to try to turn on the lights, if it fails to turn on, it will update you through the app. Yeah, but uh, take for example, if you use a 433 system, if you send, the icon change to turn on light, but the light doesn't turn on. It doesn't tell you that it, it has failed. Yeah. So yes, I'm very biased with Z-Wave. And um, the usual koyo for Z-Wave is, uh, uh, there's, it is manufactured by 200 over brands. Okay? Uh, but as long as it's on Z-Wave, they can interoperate. So you can buy something from brand A, buy something from brand A, brand B, and all mixed together. Yeah. Then the other thing is mesh network. Uh, so with this mesh network, um, the device actually talk to each other. Um, so you don't have encounter cases like Wi-Fi blind spots that some area of a house just cannot reach. Yeah. So we can use a mesh network to reach every every spot of the house. Uh, so just as I mentioned, there's tons of products and designs to choose from, and there's a lot of APIs, a lot of hacks that you can download from the net to actually play with it. Okay. Uh, before I go into my simple demo setup, okay, um, how people usually implement their smart home, they will first need a Z-Wave hub. Okay? 
you can see smart things over there. Yeah, smart things, I think many of you have heard of it. Yeah. But there's a lot of other Z-Way hub out there, like Vera. This is another one that a lot of um, hobbies like to use. Uh, this is Fibaro Z-Way hub. Uh, more user friendly. Uh, if you, if I were to draw an analogy, is Vera is like the Android of Z-Wave Hub, and Fibaro is like an iOS of Z-Wave Hub. Yeah. Then another one, more uh, versatile one, is Homes here. Um, very commonly used in US, but uh, we are still uh, looking how we can bring it here, lah. Yeah. So you can see some of the Z-Wave Hub can talk in many different languages. Say for example, Vera. It can talk in Z-Wave, can talk in Wi-Fi, can talk in Bluetooth, and VPN. This is the way to go. Even Samsung smart things are, are going this way. So, so that's why hubs are getting like multi-protocol. But again, the most product is still Z-Wave. Okay, so if we were to do a smart home, you usually do lightings, curtains, aircon, door locks, and you deploy a bunch of sensors in the house. Okay, so for lightings, what do you need? Actually, you need either a Z-Wave light switch. Uh, I have one here, which actually you just touch and control the lights. Okay. Uh, the other one is a Z-Wave relay. Typically, how you use is if you have a normal light switch, you have to open it up, put this fella inside the inside the uh, cable box, and then wire it to the switch in the light. That's how the the Z-Wave hub will be able to communicate to your lights. Then for for air conditioning. Uh, we have this Z-Wave to infrared uh, uh, extender. That means once you send, uh, once you, that means you can also use a phone send to a Z-Wave hub to turn on the aircon, and then you will send uh, infrared to turn on your aircon. Yeah. Then for your curtains, uh, you will need a motorized curtain track first. Then we put in a Z-Wave module to control the motorized curtain track. Yeah. Um, for door locks, I brought one here. This is the Dana lock, which looks like a very uh, looks like August. If you have one, if you have seen all those Kickstarter projects, one of the locks is like it just replaced the Thumbton and then have it lock and unlock the door. It's different from those traditional ones you see from Yo, Samsung, where actually changed the entire entire lock, and you have a fingerprint or a, a number pad in front. Yeah, so there's their choices. You also have, have a Z-Wave lock that we can communicate to. Uh, then in terms of uh, sensors, yeah, um, there is a lot of sensors, but here I'm just showing like we have a door sensor uh, that detects the opening and closing of door. So at my place, what I do is um, if I reach home after 6.30, I open the door, the entrance door, entrance light will come on. If I reach before 6.30 and open the door, nothing happens. Yeah. Then again, sensors. Uh, there is quite a number of multi sensors in, in, in the Z Wave uh, uh, product range. So, this is one of the multi sensors that can do uh, motion sensing, light sensing, uh, and what do you call that? Motion sensing, light sensing, and temperature sensing. So, um, what I do in my own house is I put this sensor in my kitchen. If I walk into a kitchen before 10 o'clock, it actually turns on the main light. If I walk in the kitchen after 10, then it turns on the night light. Yeah. So these are the, these are the uh, uh, smartness you can put inside your house. Now. Basically, if you go for a traditional motion sensor, as long as there's motion, it will always turn on one single light. But this one, you can choose timing as well as what kind of lights to turn on. Yeah. Then I also put this thing in my window. So if the sun shines into the room, then my curtain closes. Yeah. So, so it, there's many things you can play with it. Uh, and typically, my customers will will either okay, the more daring one. Uh, okay, in Z, in Z Wave setup, uh, you always have. That means whenever I engage my customer, there's two part. One is electrical wiring. That means wire all these light switches into your inside inside into your light switch. Then the other part is the software setup where we all set all the logics that I mentioned earlier. So some of the customers, they are daring. They just buy it off the shelf, go to my uh, online store and order, and then they just either they wire it in themselves or ask the electrician wire it in. And then they also do the software setup themselves. So 
this is very possible because the Z-Wave uh, ecosystem itself is very DIY. Yeah, but in Singapore, still a lot of people will say, ah, why don't you do everything for me? I don't want to worry. I don't want to learn. So the busy people will say, ah, will pay me, if wire for me, la. then pay me, or you set up for me. La. But it's not fun la, to me. Yeah. So the, the, the middle is those, the smarter ones who will say, oh, I will pay someone to do the electrical, and then they will do the setup themselves. This is the most fun. La. Yeah. Okay. So let me show you uh, my demo over here. Basically, I have this smart home setup, the Fibaro one, uh, which is which is this 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 one over here, and then I have a light switch over here. Okay, um, so my demo will be something like this. Okay, so this is just my very, very, uh, very, very basic setup. Okay, uh, I have this have this light switch which is already packed to the to the smart home center. So is it whenever I turn on the light, the, the system will actually indicate your light. So so on your smartphone, you'll be able to see hey, your light has already turned on, even though you're not at home. Okay, uh, then. What I'm going to do now is do a very simple pairing. Uh, take for example, if I just bought the home center, I've installed a module inside my light switch. So how do I start controlling that particular light? Okay. So what do I do is I go to devices. Okay. Then I try to add a device. It's like you pair a Bluetooth device. So generally, I will just uh, say add. Then I'm going to add this thing. This is the thing that I put inside my light switch. Okay. So generally, if I press the light switch, I can also add. But now I'm just touching the device already. So I think I've added before. I haven't added it live in a in a in a presentation before. Let me try again. Okay, yeah. So the smart hub actually detected I I'm adding this this particular. Task is whatever thing that needs to do. Hmm? Uh, because in in this little device itself, there's a lot of parameters uh, that you can set. Uh, you can set uh, whether it detects the the, the light. Uh, how this is the dimmable light, so it will detect all oh, the, the most dim and the most bright. Yeah, so a lot of character that is set. Yeah, so now here it appears as a new device that has been added to the app. Yeah. So you can see 
just turning on and off, it will actually uh, affect this, this particular downline. This is a very normal downline. It's nothing special. You can buy it off anywhere from Velastip. Yeah, but because we connect this to the Z-Wave module, it can control a dimmable downline. Yeah, so if I do it, like, you can see the intensity of the brightness. Yeah. So over here, this is how we add one device. Yeah. So you can add many devices, like all your light switches, add 20, 30 of them, and we start to add for the curtains. Uh, but we don't have any curtain to show you right now. Uh, so what I'm going to show you right now is something like uh, what I just mentioned. If I actually uh, come back home and then open the door. Okay, you notice when I close the door, this, this metal door icon here, this is due to this, this door sensor over here. It sends that the door is open first. Yeah. So basically if I open the icon there, it will open immediately. So how I, how now how do I link these two up as a as a logic? Okay? So I can say I go to scene. Scene is a, a logic that you set into the smart home gateway to see if something happened, then do what? Yeah, it's something like IFTTT like that. Yeah. But again, this scene is block diagram, quite easy to set up. Okay, so I say if uh, all numbers. Guy, my entrance light. <coughs> yeah. So I go to the scene and then I say I'm going to add a new scene. Which means it's open. Okay. There's many kind of, uh, you can bridge an arm, bridge and disarm, the one I don't go into it, but typically people just do bridge and uh, save. Save is closed, bridge is open. Then I go to, then I choose entrance light, turn on. So I name the scene door open. Yep. Okay, I did never do it in a demo before, so but it works. <laughs> so so generally uh, you can see it's very immediate. Once you open, it actually det detects quite fast. Yeah. So if you just to end out, if you were to add, you would do the same thing using using Samsung smart things. Uh, it will be almost. It might not be as fast as, as this because this one is everything running in local. It doesn't need internet connection. Uh, if you have if you ever buy a Samsung smart things, you always need an uh, internet connection to do all this setup. This is why my, my, my Wi-Fi doesn't have any internet connection. Mm -hmm. So the Samsung smart things will usually go send a command all the way to the cloud and then the logic there happens and come back all the way in. Yeah. So that that's the that's the good thing about some of the zero hub out there that doesn't need internet connection. So now hey, door open. My light is still on. What happens? So it's either I change my logic to say turn off the light after five minutes. Yeah, because I come home, open the door, I don't, don't need to care about like five minutes later I need it off. Yeah. In this case, I don't, don't do five minutes, I just do something like... I 
I just add to the logic and say n device entrance night turn off after 10 seconds. Yeah, so it turn on immediately and turn off after 10 seconds. So let me try again. Okay, so I'll turn my ball. It turns on. It should turn off after 10 seconds. So this is, once you have every of these device in your house, then you can start playing with this logic. So a lot of logics you need to live in a house, use it, and then you realize it works or not. At first I bought motion sensors, I put in my room. I thought I can go inside the room, don't need to touch the wall switch. I put motion sensor, I go walk in the room, the light turns on. Okay, very happy, I sit down on my laptop, doing nothing. The motion sensor thinks that I'm not there, so it turns off the light. I think it's common when you go to all those meeting rooms that you, once you sit down there and do nothing, you have to wait. Yeah. So, so the good thing about this, you then I realized it, it doesn't really work that way. So you probably have to tweak the scene and say, uh, if there's more motion for half an hour, then you turn off the light. And in the middle, if there's some motion, then you ignore what was previously uh, executed. Yeah, so in, in this case, just imagine if this is a motion sensor and they say it's bridge, right? The other one is if it is safe, then we... Okay, in, in the case of the motion sensor, we have to say if it's safe, then it turn off the light, right? But we don't want it to turn off immediately. We just set a delay and say it's safe for, uh, say, 50 seconds. Yeah, then, then you turn off the light. So, so these are the things that you need to play around uh, once you have, like, all these things in the house. Uh, yeah. Again, smart home is not all about having a, a smartphone you can control and that's about it. Yeah. To me, a smart home is something that you don't need a smartphone. Yeah. Because it's just remote control, like any any product can do it. Yeah. But the, 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 the home is only as smart as the phone. Like. So um it's the lock compared. <laughs> okay. So this is this is this is the lock that I'm talking about. Just now I was telling you about the zero smart lock. Yeah. So opening up the, the, the sender. This this is just a this is just a very normal door. In, in even in front it looks like just a normal door with a, with a lock. So this lock actually helps you to turn that thing that, that locks your door. Yeah. So what you can say in the logic is if the door is closed, then auto lock the lock. Yeah. But in this case, I mean we can also activate it like that. Uh, the good thing is in front it doesn't look like a, a special dog. You still can use your key, right? And you still can remotely use your phone to unlock the door if someone comes by. Yeah. And particularly this lock you can also link to Airbnb. It comes out from, from its own app. You link it to Airbnb. Uh, you can say um, temporary issue this code to this guest you have in Airbnb. Yeah, so some some of the Airbnb uh, owners actually using this lock to manage their their keys instead of having to hide the key somewhere and go somewhere to meet the their their, their uh, guests. Yeah. Um, up to this point, I did, did I lose anyone? Any any specific question? 
Yeah. Oh no. Okay, this kind of door locks is if running on battery. You see these four batteries? Okay. So do I have to keep the batteries charged? Like how, how long is the battery? This life? battery life is around six to nine months. Okay, so what happens months. after that I can replace it up? After that, basically you just pop this out and then just replace the battery. Oh. Yeah, this one is just a cover. Okay. Yeah. So in the case if if there's low battery, right, on the system itself, it also it also notify you. Then, then for I think one of the concepts <coughs> when you hook up your house to home automation is does it actually increase my electricity bill a lot? Because now you have so many more connected mm. devices that mm. run power. Mm. All the time. Mm. So, do people find that actually I'm actually spending more to maintain this system? Um, my answer is yes and no. Okay, why? It's because on my in my own place, I okay. You know when you switch off, when you don't switch off your electric appliance, that 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 standby is also taking a lot of uh, a lot of power. Uh, the standby for all this module is less than half a watt. Yeah. So in a way, if you use this to manage those standby electrical appliances, uh, you actually say compared to just letting them go on standby. Yeah. So that is how you use it. But generally, if you say you have hundreds of these running 0 0.5 watts, mm. then you're always using 50 watts. Uh. Mm. Yeah. So um, it doesn't increase tremendously. But if you use it correctly, it actually increases. Yeah. Um, I, I didn't have a chance to show in this demo because uh, there is in this system you, we can also have something like a uh, electrical meter something that I, yeah. So, motion sensor is it practical? Sorry? Is it practical to use motion sensor? Okay. Okay, nowadays uh, it, to me motion sensor is for convenience it is not for saving because this this particular LED now like how many watts does it take? I mean that few seconds or few minutes of lights that you actually waste like, is totally negligible. Yeah. So personally, I feel motion sensor it doesn't really save energy. It only adds to the convenience. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Now that the down light is very energy efficient. Uh huh. Uh huh. It's, it's the same as Z-Wave. So, Belkin, again, is running on... Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It cut, off, it cut off the power to the fan. But your Belkin is still taking power. Yeah. Because it needs to be connected to Wi-Fi. And that is another reason why I don't choose a Wi-Fi one. Because a Wi-Fi device will always use more power than uh, all this low power transmission protocol. Like Z-Wave and Z-Wave. They are, they are, the power is very low to keep it keep it on, but if to keep the Wi-Fi on is quite uh, using quite a bit of power. Yeah. One question: Why you use uh, motion sensor rather than infrared sensor? Because motion sensor, some of the pet owners find very troublesome because pet owner likes to turn off. Pet pet owner? Pet owner because of the motion sensor, right? Cats or? Oh, cats owner. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, okay. The motion sensor itself uh, is, is actually a passive infrared sensor. It's an infrared sensor. So, so uh, that day when I'm implementing this for one customer, he put a motion sensor is in, in his bathroom. So he was expecting that once he push open the door, right, the, the toilet door, the toilet light will turn on. But it will not happen until he step inside because it is a passive infrared sensor. You need to cut through his vision to activate the sensor. So if it's so most of motion sensor will also apply to pets lah because pets have heat ma. So unless you keep it going lah, <laughs> pets have heat lah. So so as long as you walk past the vision of the motion sensor, it will actually trigger as well. Yeah. The notebook be on all the time. No, the notebook doesn't need to be on all the time. This this fella is is on all the time. This this gateway. Yeah, uh, maybe I hold it up a, a little higher. Yeah, this particular gateway will need to be on all the time and it's connected to a router. The home automation community in Singapore very big or it's very very niche like hobbyist right now? Do you see it's gonna grow? Yes, yes. Because 
Let me show you uh, this particular page where some of you guys came in from. Uh, this home automation game. The 3541. Uh, we started like four years ago. Four years ago. So of course there is, I mean there, there, there's a lot of locals inside here. Uh, again, there's also a lot of foreigners inside here. Lah. Because I don't think there's any any other home automation group uh, that's that problem. So, um, in term because of you know Singapore those smart nation initiative la, and all those uh, condos starting to have smart home uh, already inbuilt, and people get interested and want to find out, and then they realize eh, it is actually not so expensive. Just now I mentioned like uh, the Saban, the Control 4, the traditional one, you need 5 digits to implement a normal apartment. For smart home, uh, this Z-Wave, um, you just you probably need 2K plus to control all your lightings and aircon in a 3 meter. 2K plus. Yeah, so it's not like 10K anymore. Yeah. And if you were to implement yourself, right, you spend slightly over a thousand, you can actually do a lot of things with it. Sorry again? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Correct, correct. Uh, if you okay, if you want to use a relay, it's because you want to keep your existing plastic switch. It, it works with a regular normal plastic switch that you see around here as well. So unless you want to have aesthetic uh, purpose, then people usually choose this uh, because it looks nicer. Uh. Yeah, but there is there's not much of a difference in terms of operation. Uh, just that it looks nicer. Just that it looks nicer. Yeah. But most uh, what, most plastic just I mean there will be space for the relay to go in. Uh, most of the new houses, yes. The old houses because some of the old houses, let's say HDB, they have this plastic box that protrudes out of the wall. That kind is not sufficient. You need one depth bigger. For it, for it to fit. Yeah. So you help them through the whole. No, no, it's it. The, the old housing, the, the, oh, the, the you box is outside. Go there and just the whole for that uh, my electrician will do that. Uh, my electrician will do that. Yeah. That makes another question. Mm. Uh, this kind of light is right. Mm. I know that there are differences between the normal lights and those beam. Mm. So, why are you inside? Is that information? Uh, on the wall, there's, there is a different wiring, but it, the one, uh, how to say, it's just a different way, but it's no implication. A different way to. Oh, that's so we are using this kind of wiring. Sorry? Uh, in this kind of switch, wiring, does it support the kind of switch? If I use this kind of switch, it doesn't support. Yeah. This kind of switch is, is, is on off. Yeah. Uh, and the relay is on off. But if I use a dimmer, then, then usually I will not. I will the use a. Correct, correct, correct. Yeah. Usually a dimmer, if I use this switch, right, I will tell the electrician to install this module and the light itself. Yeah. So, let's say I can use the dimmer, I have to buy the bulb Dimmable. Yeah, the, the bulb must be, your light must be <laughs> dimmable in the first place to use the dimmer module. So, that means I have to put a relay. Is this something like a relay for dimmer? Is that something like that? Uh, no. The wiring? No, it's the same. It's the same. It's the same number of wires, whether it's dimmable light or not. It's the same number of wires. It's just different ports that you plug into this thing. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So actually, for this system, the triggering system, uh, system will either be a radio wave, mm -hmm. infrared, motion, mm -hmm. and uh, and uh, and your phone, lah, of course. Yeah, with the main TV. I mean, they, they are they started to say from your this uh, central to your setup the system. Uh -huh. Because here in our home, we want, uh, like for example, at Corp is now all using infrared and direct to uh, direct site. Correct, correct, correct. So, how do you need to uh, convert those sort of things to, uh, to work on your income, let's say? Okay, I, I, I don't have a remote tech here, right? Mm -hmm. I'm not sure. Ah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Central I can but basically, 
I have something like this. This is a infrared blaster, but it's a Z-wave. That means it receives a Z-wave signal and then sends out an infrared signal. Yeah. Yeah. So infrared blasters are there targeted ones, just one that we are directing and all over. This is all over. Yeah, but so I mean, are there any devices that just sends in one particular type? Uh, no. Like traditional aircons, right? You've got aircons that are close together. Yes. You use a controller and both of them at the same time. Yes, yes, yes. This is the same thing. Unless you have... Because usually when in your house, right, your aircon will be the same brand. You take the same remote, you can control both. Then it will encounter the same thing. So usually if I need to separate them out, right? Uh, because this one is 360, so what I will, I will take out some. <laughs> yeah, I'll take out some of them so that it goes one direction. Yeah. Uh, if I say it is a pure hundred percent, I'm I'm just lying up. <laughs> because okay, this gateway has its own ID password facility. Okay, but it doesn't mean that it is free from. Someone really tried to hack into it. Uh, I think it's possible. I think it's possible. But it's not laid out in open for people to just. It's like your IP camera. If you don't change your default password, yeah, someone going to see your house. So it's, it's the same same concept. It's not. This is a few hundred dollars that it, it can't really defend from a, a, a really a ha hacking. Attack. Now I'm not connected and, and I can still set it up. Yeah. yeah. In your home, you use this same device for everything? Yes, yes. Yes. But your door over there, is it, uh, you do access by keying in the password or some numbers? Um, it's sensing either my phone through Bluetooth, that means I, sense, uh, I set up like it is so trusting my phone. So you have a code in your handphone that sends the signal to you? Correct. Um, basically, I just do a pairing of, of the phone to, to this, and it recognizes the phone that you have been paired to, and then the the, the this guy also have his software encryption key that, that is stored inside the phone. How, how secure is this? Uh, how secure is it? Again, <laughs> I wouldn't. So some of my customers always ask me this question. I just I just I just tap the thing. Yeah, some of my customers always ask me this question. Is it secure? Uh, bluntly lah. Bluntly, I would say, I no. I would say no. I mean, I wouldn't say it's hundred percent secure because anything electronic, anything digital, there is a chance. Even banks get get hacked. So why would a few hundred dollar system say no way? It's not gonna get hacked. I'm lying with you, like not. Yeah, because like the opening door, we we heard of you know those like mm. car auto auto mm. door. Mm. People could actually uh, what they capture the signal and then. Ah okay okay. If if you are talking in that sense, ah. Uh, uh, between the gateway and this door lock, uh, okay, let's don't talk about lights. Lah. Lights, when you do pairing, it's a very straightforward, simple simple pairing. If you are able to spoof the, the signal of this, 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 this communication, you can turn on the light. But for the door, that is another uh, encryption key between the lock and the gateway. So, again, it's not late and open, but I think if you do brute force over many years, you will be able to find the key. Lah. But you have to see outside someone's house for a few years now. <laughs> yeah. So so yeah. I wouldn't say it's hundred percent secure. Like Yes. So unfortunately my echo is not, not cooperating with me right now. He just don't want to connect to my <laughs> to my Wi Fi. So in my house, I don't use my phone, I use my voice. Yeah, so I say turn on turn on dining, turn on living. Uh, turn on curtains, uh, things like that. So, so um, we develop our own software bridge running on this Raspberry Pi here, that that allows Echo to talk to it. Yeah. So again, um, that time I did share on this group also. Uh, Also did for
Yeah, this is my house. Uh, this is the Apple Home Kit. Apple Home Kit. So once you turn on the, you, you know, iOS 10, you turn on Apple Home Kit app. Uh, uh, through this particular bridge, it also thinks that this system is home compatible. Yeah, so I can also control uh, how the lighting is. Yeah. yeah, I would love to demonstrate that. So uh, that, that's the fun part about Z-Wave because there is a lot of hobbies in the community. They develop open source things, then you can actually make them talk to Echo, make them talk to HomeKit, make them talk to Google Home. I think Google Home will be the next one. Yeah. Mine has arrived in the US, so I'm waiting for it to ship over. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah. So ju just now I was almost trying to share this, this part where, uh, yeah. So to me, a smart home is something that doesn't need your phone anymore. Uh, either you use sensors or you use timing. To, to, to do things uh, according to what you want. Uh, if not, you use voice to tell Alexa, turn on lights, turn on aircon. Or you can even control it through HomeKit via Apple Watch. Yeah, so, uh, unfortunately, still a lot of um, companies trying to sell it like, oh, you can remote control your lights. <laughs> really nothing new. <laughs> so, um, yeah, almost an hour. So that's that's all for my sharing. But I, I mean, I'm still willing to answer more questions if, if anyone who still have some more questions, or you can feel free to come and see whatever things that I have over here. I mean, we've been hearing a lot of lights, mm. sensors, but is there any particularly unusual use case for home automation that you can talk about? Because I always see light sensors and can mm. hear a lot, but is there something different? Use it for maybe out of ordinary. Out of ordinary. Uh, you see, uh, when, when it's home automation, you either go from a convenience point of view, or you go from a security point of view, or you go for an energy saving point of view. So, other than light sensor, uh, security point of view is we, we will put a lot of all these motion sensors, all these door sensors. Uh, because the system, what, can, what the system can do is you can set that. Uh, if this door is open at certain timing, it sends you a notification through the app. Yeah. So that serves as a com uh, security point of view. Yeah. Yeah. You can say it, it, it goes through, uh, it's included in some alarm system. And then if it's breached, the siren actually sounds. So you can actually use this as a security system. Yeah. Then in terms of energy saving point of view, just now I mentioned, there's also Z-Wave devices that allow you to clamp onto your main power mains and then read the reading every minute. So rather than every time, end of the month, you see, oh, I use $300, but you don't know when you use $300. Yeah, so, so that, that is one thing. Uh, in fact, through my house, I learned that uh, if I go home and then I just blast 24, versus I, while my, on my way home, I set the on aircon scene. The on, on aircon scene was turned on my aircon at 27, at 26, 25, and 24. It uses less energy than I go home just plus 24. Yeah. So, so that's from the energy point of view. Yeah. Uh, voice interface is still very new. La. So if you see in the market, they will all be having this interface and the phone to remote control. That, that's, that's the trend. Yeah. Voice interface is just released one or two years ago. So, so uh, people are integrating into this, this thing. In fact, if, if some of you might know Alexa, uh, this Amazon Echo, they, they have skills that you can add on. Yeah, people are developing uh, coding and developing skills that can add on to this Alexa, where they control out of the box, you control feelings you like already. Yeah, so so uh, I think this the voice is a trend, uh, voice is a trend. So if, if this uh, uh, Z Wave Club is uh, what they are sounding, kaput or what the wrong, then the whole thing go into a big mess now. Mm, if it goes kaput, then your light switch will still work as it is. So if in my house, if I switch off this thing, 
my light switch, uh, I still uh, so I still turn it on like like a normal. I, yeah, I still have those normal double gang switch, the plastic switch, and it still works as if it is a normal house. Uh, so some of my customer when they reno their house, uh, uh, we ask, I will ask my electrician go and install the module first. But before we set it, set the before I bring this to their site and do the setup, it works like a normal house. Yeah, so there's no difference. And then for the door, let's say if, if the this uh, what the hub is coupled, you still can manually open. Correct, correct, because you still have the key, ma. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Really have to keep the key, la. I mean, even I don't trust you still do, you still technology so much. <laughs> <laughs> huh? It's a uh, so that uh, that device is actually operating on uh, some uh, device cell battery. Yeah, yeah. Correct, correct, correct. So uh, even I embrace all these things, uh, I still keep the key in my car. Yeah. Mine is the car of your digital lock when you press the pin on. Yeah. So there was once I I changed car a few years ago. So I, I took the key, keep inside my house for that one or two days and the battery died. I, I ignored that warning. So I end up not able to enter my own house. Yeah, so I have to damage my own lock. Yeah. Yeah. So the the key you still have to keep in somewhere. <laughs> yeah. This one is the outside. This one is the inside. Yeah. So you're actually attaching some the locks at the back of the door. For for this particular door. How much coding knowledge do I need to have on the Raspberry Pi to carry to echo? there is some coding knowledge. You must be comfortable in running some uh, what do you call that uh, common from common lines. Uh. You don't really need coding. Don't really code it because. Stream anything. Huh? Stream anything? Yes. Script anything, don't have to. Don't have to. Uh, don't have to. I think some of the some of the open source uh, are so mature that you just need to uh, download and just run it. So, uh, what kind of special? Uh, uh, I see you are connected to your code here. So, will there be any. Uh, where people will come in and stop this kind of uh, pairing of devices, but other devices to compete? Uh, they, I don't think they can. Because, I, I don't think they can. Because what happens is, is this device is if you're pretending to, to send out something like uh, Apple Home Kit commands. Yeah, so, so same, as, uh, same as when I control with uh, Echo. Yeah. Um, I, I don't know whether I can show this to you. The, this thing is on. Oh, I can turn it on. Okay, let, let me try to show you something that uh, we did. Just the interface to, to talk to Echo. But at the end, Echo is not waking up. But I can show you the interface. So this is one of the uh, what do you call that? This software is running on this Raspberry Pi. Yeah, and this software pretends to be a Philip Blue Bridge, which is already com compatible with uh, this Echo. Yeah. So what happens is in this this Raspberry Pi will read my home center and find out it. I have all these switches there. Yeah. So in effect, from here I can actually. Turn on and turn off. You, you hear this? You see this thing clicking here? Yeah. So this Raspberry Pi is actually talking to my, to my, uh, to my home center, and this is this very hard really. So effectively, I just need to go to uh, things like my Echo, right, and then do a discovery, as if it's discovery all those few regions. Like that. Maybe I can show the the Echo at my own place. 
So this is a login for Amazon Echo, right? If I go to Smart Home, you can see this is the Echo in my house. Uh, it already detected that on my Z-Wave Hub there's this curtain, there's a glass door, master light, uh, dimmer, whatever, really a lot of things in the house. Uh, yes, there's this funny light. Some of them are offline. Yeah. So, so once Echo discover it, right, you can just say Alexa, turn on, <coughs> turn on curtains, turn on glass door, turn on master. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, right now it doesn't understand open and close. You have to say for for curtains it's a bit awkward. I say turn on curtains, not not open. <coughs> but for Apple Home Kit, just now I show you that screenshot. On Siri, you can say turn open curtains. Yeah. So, I believe this is the way to go for as an interface to a smart home using voice. So, yeah, that's, that's, that's all I have. Uh, feel free to come and take a look and play with yourself. Um, the Z-Wave Hub, what does the Z-Wave Hub do? Um, the Z-Wave Hub talks to every single device, like your... Sorry? It's the same thing. A, a dongle, once you plug into a PC, you turn your PC into a hub. Yeah. yeah. That's why you need a hub. But you need a PC to be always on, ma. Yeah, you need a hub. You need a hub. Correct, 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 correct. But if you buy a dongle and then plug into your, your, your desktop, it's going to use more power than this thing. Yeah. Yeah. So, so that's why people, some people buy dongle. Also can. Some people actually use a pie and a dongle to build their own hub. What's the range of this uh, way? On paper, it's 30 meters indoor, uh, but my experience 20 meters plus. And each, the each 30 meter is a hop. Means, because Johanna mentioned it's a mesh network. So if it doesn't reach that switch, it will talk to this switch, it will talk to that switch. Yeah. That's why the coverage gets wider if you have more device at home. Any more questions? So what's the cost of uh, basic setup like uh, hub and uh, a couple of things? I can I can quickly tell you the hub itself uh, the hub can range from the cheapest hub that I've seen is maybe two hundred plus. Two hundred plus. This is a four hundred plus dollar hub. So every relay is probably ninety dollars So you add it up to even your whole house is, is probably slightly over thousand. Slightly over thousand for, for controlling all life. And this thing controls your icon. <laughs> Uh, one of them costs around 150. So it turns your account into like you know, Daikin and one way. Would you prefer to If you only have one bulb in your circuit, that means your one switch turn on one bulb, you use a zero bulb cheaper. That's 40 40 dollars. But you have like turn on one switch that's 10 bucks, then you use a relay. Because you're not going to spend four hundred dollars on just just on that row of light, right? How big is it? Yes, yes, yes. For for newer houses, yes. those older houses, house. older house, like I mentioned, those plastic box that pop out on the wall, right? That one cannot fit in. Yeah, so you have to buy a deeper plastic box. Yeah. Yes, yes, people sell it. Yeah, it's actually available, but no, you really know people, no one buys it because of it. Yeah. What's the communication protocol between your Wi-Fi. Um, just normal uh, HTTP. Uh, normal HTTP. Sorry? Is this for Uber or Italy? They communicate through the LAN, uh, either using Wi-Fi or using Uh, okay, unfortunately, I, I wish I'm selling a code, but <laughs> I'm not, no problem. Uh, we, 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 okay, we buy a code from Amazon and then we package with our pie 
with our software and sell it to people lah. Yeah, so so we do that as well. Yeah, but yeah, so we actually buy from people. Okay, and any any other questions? So what is your setup at home? Sorry, my setup at home. My setup at home. Uh, well, really a lot of lights. I use a, I use mostly relay. I use mostly relay because at the point when I when I do did my house, I this switch is not out yet. So at the point it's mostly relay. Just the Yeah. So if it's for dimmable light, we put in because the on off relay and the dimmable relay all look, look the same. This this black little thing here. Yeah, they all look the same. So. Uh, if it's an on-off light, then we use an on-off version. If it's a dimmable light, then we use a dimmable version. So it comes in different models. So if you have LED strip that have colors, this also have that 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 model that supports the color LED strip. But, uh, this this uh, uh, this switch is just on off. No, not yet, not yet, not yet, not yet. So. If I set up a customer, usually I'll use this and the dimmer relay. It's a bit more costly, but it affects the it achieves the same effect. So that you still can dim using a phone, but you can on off using it. Or you can just say Alexa dim to forty percent, and you really dim to forty percent. Okay, yeah, so, so my answer to you is if you have just lit one or two bulbs in your circuit, then you use the bulb. Uh, but if you have 10 here, then really use the relay for economical. Relay don't have to. Relay don't have to. Only the dimmable, dimmable light, uh, I usually advise customers to test. Because sometimes, you know this sound mix in China, I don't know from where, then, uh, they tend to flicker when you dim. It doesn't look so nice. Because I was considering the dims, because you don't have so much problem with dims. Yes, but 3 bucks cost you $200, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Just one question. Are your plans being the HPD owners of private cut out property owners? Because there's more things to pay with for private property with grudge. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. yeah. But apparently, most of my customers are from ECs and HDB and condo. Yeah. So you, there's not much to play. Not say not much to play lah. I mean, for those that are living in landed private properties, mm -hmm. uh, if they were to go and ask around, people would tell them the original tree that is super advanced, super expensive one. So unless they they are techy now, then they will come to us lah. But most of the time, they don't know the existence of Zwei. Or all this uh, mid-range uh, home automation system. There's really dirt cheap one from China. You can buy sensor, buy switch, everything comes in. Yeah, but it's a dead end system. Uh. You can't play with API, you can't do anything else. What's the price of the dollar? Uh, dollar, okay. This particular one costs around 300. Yeah. A Yale dollar costs around 600 plus 700. A Samsung dollar costs around 900 to dollars. That's just to put things in perspective. Of course, you again can find something cheaper than Taobao. <laughs> but it's likely not going to be Z-Wave. Huh? <coughs> Thank uh, No, no. This, this lock, they are coming up with uh, digital pad, that means you put it in front, then it talks to the lock behind. It's not released yet, uh. so now we have it behind, so it's in front. <laughs> yes, yes, because I actually set the Bluetooth mark, so if I'm near from outside coming back, then it will do a lot. And so this is this have multiple protocol uh, Bluetooth and Z Wave. Yeah. Uh, 
Any more? I mean, we can take it offline for any other questions. Thank you, thank you. For Mike? Okay, I'm going to ask Linus, Linus, talk about the next talk. Yeah, so our next talk in 